Welcome to Global Connections on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Jay Fidel. Today we're going to talk about Putin and Modi. What a combination. Analyzing the strength, the character, the success, the dangers of their bilateral discussions. Our guest for this show is Rupmati Kandakar, geopolitical analyst. Welcome, Rupmati. Aloha, Jay, and thank you for having me on your show. Always my pleasure. Well, there's a lot of questions about this, you know, um, but I think people need to understand the relationship between India and Russia because it's all against the backdrop of that. Can you talk about the historical relationship of the two countries? Because that will inform us as to exactly why Modi is willing to make this embrace of Putin. Yeah, so Jay, now uh, it starts with Modi winning his... Uh third term, historical third term as Prime Minister of India. It's never happened before, right, before 1962. And he chooses Russia to go for his first overseas visit. So it now brings out, uh, it raises eyebrows in the West. And uh, even the Kremlin calls it that the West is viewing it with jealousy. <laughs> jealousy is the word that they use. And uh, uh, all eyes, all eyes of international relations focused on this meeting. So, Jay, why it was such a historic meeting and uh, why this uh, Modi-Putin dynamic is so important, uh, like you said, first we have to go for the historical ties that happen. So, it's always a question that we ask, right? Like, it's troubling to see why Modi is siding Putin or why is India being with so nice with Russia, even in the face of Ukraine uh, war. This question keeps on pricking everybody's mind, right? So now let me just take you back into history and let you, you remember the Task Force 74, which was formed. Uh, the first task force was formed between the Royal Navy, uh, the Royal Australian Navy and uh, US Navy to tackle Japan, okay, during the World War. Now that the, the point that comes in, when was the second task force formed? That was the U.S. 7th Fleet, which came into the Indian Ocean to intimidate India when India was on a full-on fight, on a war with Pakistan in 1971. So, Jay, it was a direct threat. You had the warship right in the sea, and we are facing a very antagonistic and crazy neighbor uh, who just wanted to, you know, it was a difficult time. And when America threatened, Russia at that time had brought these two, uh, you know, it had bought two groups of uh, uh, bombers and a submarine with nuclear warheads, and it kept on following the U.S. fleet, neutralizing the aggressiveness from uh, 18 December to 6th January 1971. Long, long, long time back. But it laid the foundation for this partnership, Jay. Because though India has been with uh, Russia since 1947, since one of the first countries to start diplomatic relations, this particular incident has, you know, stayed in the Indian minds that in the face of a war, Russia came to help. And that strategic bond that they made, the strategic partnership that they made, they openly declared that anybody who attacked India would declare a war on us. Because just imagine, at that time, if we had to face a U.S. Uh, uh, US 7th Fleet, it was, it was total defeat for India. So uh, that loyalty stuck through. And uh, it, the strategic partnership kept on going strength to strength. And Jay, uh, even when Ukraine was happening, they have come and, uh, to India first. And Russia and China, though they're very good friends, and, you know, India cannot come in between this partnership. India stands as a third, uh, as a more loyal and trustworthy uh, friend for the Russians. So, Jay, this dynamic is very, very complicated. But, oh, uh, I think when... so. But let's, let's mm. go back to the Seventh Fleet in the 70s. Why did the U.S. do that? It sounds yeah. like it was a gross error. Yes, yes, definitely, Jay, because... Why, I'll tell you, if India was in normal circumstances and you send the 7th Fleet, agreed. But just to help Pakistan or to intimidate the, the, the notion by the Nixon administration was very clear. It was to intimidate India 
to stop the war or uh, concede defeat in the war against Pakistan. Marty, that, that had to be um, Henry Kissinger and Richard Nixon, Nixon right? Nixon, Nixon, Nixon administration had sent this. And uh, Jay, see, Russia could have just watched. It did not need to send a submarine with nuclear warheads. So that neutralized the uh, um, uh, aggression. Again. It gave a very, you know, when you are drowning and you get support, that, that you, you remember. So that's what happened with India. And that's the foundation on which India-Russia strategic partnership is laid. Sheer trust, sheer loyalty, because Russia did not need to come in between this. But it came and it declared, if anybody attacks India, it will be war on Russia. Declared. And uh, Jay, it kept on following the fleet, 7th fleet, till it withdrew. So uh, America did not need to come in between India and Pakistan fighting a war, first part first. And secondly, uh, it, would have, it should have been a diplomatic pressurization, not sending a warship into the Indian Ocean. So that was... Uh, uh, tactical error, like you said, but Russia steps in. Then, during the vetoes on uh, the issue of Kashmir, time and again in the United Nations, Russia has uh, helped with the veto. Uh, otherwise, uh, India would have had to face a lot of flack at the uh, UN forum. And we know how they talk and how it pressurizes countries to give in. So, every time a resolution against India was passed, Russia has vetoed. Let me go back. You know, the, the whole affair of the Seventh Fleet was, mm. uh, gee, that was more than 50 years ago. 1971. Um, yeah. And at the same time, it seems to me that um, Narendra Modi is a very strong, charismatic um, mm. leader. Um, yeah. People like him. They're willing to follow him. And he's, he's smart enough to know exactly what's going on in the world. He's a world power. Um, and he's, um, you know, re resolved enough to make decisions. So he, if he decided one day that he was going to shove off from Russia for other reasons, reasons of, um, oh, I don't know, protecting himself from China or um, endearing himself to the United, United States and Europe, he could do that. People would follow him. They, they, oh. You wouldn't see protests in the street over something that happened 50 years ago, uh, would you? So, I mean, he's, he's got his reasons to perpetuate this historical environment you described. Yeah. Jay, around uh, 20, 20 years back, you, uh, uh, like you see, he, uh, Narendra Modi was part of the contingent under Prime Minister Vajpayee, which went to the Russia. And so he has had historical ties with Putin since decades now. So they are, uh, they are strategizing. And, you know, the aim is for a multipolar world in which these two countries are poles. Today, we are living in a hegemonic world. So uh, that is the long distance uh, uh, aim that they have. But if you go to CJ, uh, Modi, wants to secure India's strategic interests in a turbulent global landscape. And uh, Jay, about siding Russia in the Ukraine-Russia conflict, one more reason I'll tell you, uh, Ukraine has always sided Pakistan. It's like India and Pakistan are perpetual enemies. <laughs> Pakistan was formed out of India. Okay, uh, It is carved out of India as a Muslim majority uh, state, but it has waged uh, multiple wars against India. It means we had turbulent times with them because of each war, you know, Jay, economic economy plummets, uh, you have uh, uh, disturbances in the economy. And so having an antagonistic neighbor is a nuisance. And uh, Ukraine is the one which has always uh, penned down antagonistic uh, uh, rhetoric against India in the Kashmir issue, in the uh, you know in the UN, uh, the trade um, relationship was not nurtured. Now, if you, if you go to see before Ukraine 2022, India had 25 billion dollars of trade with Russia. After Ukraine, uh, you know, during today we are 65 billion. Yeah, Putin is, is selling oil and gas to get around the 
yes. uh, sanctions from the West, and so he he's very happy to be able to sell oil and gas to India. Oh, By India. the way, Putin was not around in the 70s. He was yes. uh, he was not there. He was not involved. He did not um, you know deal with the Seventh Fleet or anything like that. And Putin, you know, is uh, let me let me throw this in the hopper. Putin is a war criminal. There's an arrest warrant now for him. And we know that he has kidnapped children, raped, tortured, you know, been involved in atrocities over and over again and still is doing that. And he has actually nabbed uh, Indian people who came to Russia for jobs and, and forced them into the army. Uh, yes. We know this because Putin and Modi discussed this in that recent trip that Modi yeah. made to Moscow. So, you know, Putin is a bad guy. Everyone <laughs> knows he's a bad guy. Now, he's not a d democracy leader. He's no. an autocrat in the fullest sense, um, whereupon uh, th there's a strange, you know, distinction between Russia and India, because India is a democracy and proud of it. So <laughs> why in the world would Modi be supporting here in 2024, uh, a, a war criminal uh, and, and a, a guy who is uh, trying to be an autocrat in every way, shape, or form. Um, why, why would he support somebody like that? That's not the moral fiber of India. True, Jay. Very true and very to the point. But right now in India, it is strategic interest. You see, you, if you see India on the map, it's a peninsula surrounded by China and Pakistan. If, even if you view Russia in, its, uh, uh, in isolation, we still need Russia to counter China. You remember the Galwan incident which we spoke about? This next day, it was a bilateral between Russia and China. Now that Galwan incident where they are fighting like uh, college, uh, college guys with fists could have easily escalated into a full-blown you know, uh, 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 attack which uh, would would escalate further. But Russia called China to the table in the morning within a few hours. So for India, you need Russia to uh, counter, no, to neutralize China. Correct. And secondly, uh, not only for economically, it is helping India a lot, especially when every every country is going into recession because of the oil and gas and, you know, the repayments which happen, the selling of goods. Uh, you know, what is India's contribution in the $65 billion? $5 billion we are purchasing back. So $60 million is uh, export and $5, million, $5 billion is import. So see how much benefit India gets out of this. So if you go to see, it is just national self-interest that is high at play, moral, moral grounds and everything goes a little further down because you see, Modi has uh, made it very clear that war is not the answer to everything. He keeps on repeating it at every stage. He keeps on, he even repeated it in the bilateral. When he went to see uh, Putin, that was a yeah. big quote, war cannot solve problems. Uh, yes. Let's make you know, uh, peace with Ukraine right away. And it yeah. sounds, you know, it sounds good at, on the surface of it, but what he's really saying is he wants to support Putin in the yes. war against Ukraine. He wants mm -hmm. Putin to have what Putin wants. And, you know, and a lot of people are saying he's doing that because he wants to uh, endear himself to Putin. And, and he is betting on Trump because he knows that Trump would He's seeking the same thing. Everywhere in the world is watching to see what happens in this election here in the U.S. Um, and it is a delicate balance Mo Modi has got to do. But it, when it comes out at the end, he's going to support, he is supporting Putin against Ukraine. And he's a, so betting on Trump in the sense that uh, that, would, that would be the end, according to Trump, of the war in Ukraine. This is, this is problematic. When he says war cannot solve problems, he's really saying, I support Putin. I support Putin's war against Ukraine. And, you know, it's hard, it's hard to really, you know, uh, get along with that. I mean, I don't think he's going to make a lot of friends in Congress, uh, either by way of, uh, well, I suppose the Democrats would not like what he has to say. 
Um, the Trump GOP MAGA people will probably like what he has to say. So he's actually, you know, balancing, involved in this balancing act, not only with Modi, with uh, Putin um, and Trump, but with the Republicans who follow Trump. He oh. is actually playing for, for the electorate in the U.S. Oh. Yeah, Jay, uh, you see now what is the conceptualization that Ukraine is Biden's issue and we have to go on the opposite side and support Putin. So Ukraine, what happens in Ukraine, annexation of Ukraine, everything goes to the back burner. And what has happened? Biden has supported Ukraine, so we don't support Ukraine. It's going to go that path, Jay. Uh, it's just that I don't like my predecessor's policies. I'm going to frame my own. And uh, with my own, I will bring peace to the world. You know, you're going to have three or, you know, four very powerful leaders at the top who are going to indulge in UN politics, if you know what I mean. It will be all hunky-dory on the top and below it will be all strategic and dynamic uh, things going on. Even if they have to trample on people's heads, they're going to do it. It is all going to be selfish interests which uh, come into play. It's a risk for um, Modi because, you know, he has kind of come out um, on Putin. He's come out on supporting Putin and opposing Ukraine for the world to see, for Europe to see, for mm -hmm. the American market, whatever it's worth uh, to see. I mean, he's involved in these embraces. You know, he, you know, not only did he say war cannot solve problems, you know, meaning he was going to uh, support uh, Putin's war, but but also, you know, he, he had a number of photographs where he is in an embrace uh, with yes. Putin. And, and then you find out that Indian people were actually in the Russian army, however they got there, and died fighting Ukraine. So, I mean, what's happened is, is India has taken a side. When you connect all these dots, what you get is India is very close with Putin and uh, is involved in the war against Ukraine, which is an immoral war. Um, and so, I mean, can that, that's a piece of history too. That, that will not be forgotten, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, Jay, that is right. These soldiers who are going, they are not from India. They are Nepali people who, who from Nepal who would want to join the Indian army. But these advertisements come out in Rush, from Russia. If you want to join the Russian army, uh, you will get free immigration. That's the advertisement that is put up. Mm. So the, that is how these youth reach Russia, not because of uh, direct recruitment through the government or supporting the Russian army in this case. So they don't do that. It is private advertisements which come out saying that you will get Russian citizenship if you become a soldier. And, uh, you know, youth who want to go to foreign lands, it happens in every country, and they want to go over there. That is the uh, uh, scene that happens, Jay. And uh, Putin and Modi, uh, Jay, Modi uh, has very, when this uh, embrace thing, he's made it his trademark to embrace and uh, greet the leaders that he meets. And Putin hosted him in an informal setting. That was when they were having just, and the entire bilateral took place in Hindi, in the language of, India. So you see there is a lot of, uh, what do you say, buttering done by Putin more towards Modi. He is making a red carpet welcome for Modi. It is not Modi uh, trying to uh, butter up uh, Putin. It is the other way around. Putin is keeping Modi in his good books. It's like that. And for Modi to show himself as a world leader is very important because he won a very close election in India. And uh, Jay, like I told you, our enemy on the on the doorstep is China. And to keep China quiet, really India needs Russia. Because unless Russia, if we go for a full-fledged war with China, economy dips, uh, you have a big problem because it is right at the doorstep. And China is right now far more advanced than India in warfare. So it would be a hard-fought battle going to a defeat, which India cannot afford. So, and China surprisingly came up with a statement saying that <laughs> the West is again uh, very wary of uh, three of us coming together. 
So China put themselves put themselves also into this uh, bilateral, like you know, unwanted guests. Like even I am there, take me also in it. I totally agree. We are involved in a in a transitional moment here. Yes. You know, for yes. a long time, if you if you ask me, you know, a decade or two or three ago, um, what what the U.S. future was with India, I would say, oh God, look, you know, we we have such close relations. We, mm. we gave them nuclear energy. You remember that? Um, yes. We wanted, we wanted to build a, a, a great bridge with India as a, a co-democracy in the world. Um, there are, as you know, there are you know, millions of Indians uh, who have successfully um, you know, immigrated to the United States and who are very successful in academia uh, and in business. Um, they're CEOs of major global corporations uh, operating out of the U.S. I mean, they're really... Um, a global organization. And so, but things are changing. This uh, affair, uh, that's maybe the wrong word, but this, this relationship that um, Trump has, uh, excuse me, Putin has fashioned with Modi, Modi has fashioned with um, you know, Putin, has been the subject of criticism in the US hmm. and in Europe. So things are changing. You know, if you ask the average person on the street, what do you think about India's foreign policy? He would not be so positive about it, either in the U.S. Uh, or, or Europe. I, now, I don't know where, where the Trump factor works here, because if Trump wins, um, that's likely to change. Um, but what I see is India is joining up with Russia and China and you know, being part of that group in the world. Um, and as a result, um, uh, its relations with the U.S. are predictably different and possibly hmm. strained. So we, uh, what I'm saying is there is a transition going on. Would you agree? Yeah, Jay, I'll let you, I'll bring you on this, that let's little juggle back into history again. Uh, U.S., India, U.S. was always very, uh, always sided Pakistan against India, okay. It happened when Bill Clinton came onto the scene during the end of his tenure that he visited India first. He, he danced on, in a village, you know, he, he brought India in US relations to life. So that was the beginning of the real uh, thaw in the US-India relations. Uh, and Jay, uh, he went to Pakistan and condemned uh, terrorism. Earlier, it would always be, if you've read history books, anybody who wanted to visit India would always have to pay a visit to Pakistan. Anybody who wanted to visit, uh, you know, it was always India-Pakistan together. But today, everybody knows, views uh, Pakistan as a failed state. It is no longer existing. You cannot co-relate uh, uh, co uh, India to Pakistan. India is uh, a developing state, number four in GDP. Uh, so... It is different from a Pakistan uh, um, consideration. So anybody who wants to come to India will come to India. Earlier, I'm telling you, Jay, look up the books. Anybody wanted a visit to India would always plan a, a corresponding visit to Pakistan. So it was always, if you want to think about India, think about Pakistan. No, it, he's changed this. Modi, is, uh, Modi has changed this because he, people view India as India rather than uh, correlating it with Pakistan. We are not, we are different. So that never happened in uh, before considerations before. And imagine US taking the side of Pakistan, feeling that Pakistan is a better ally than India, right on the face. And the task force which was first formed was against Japan, which was a real enemy in the World War II. India was never an enemy to uh, bring the seventh fleet in. Uh, so that is the kind of uh, thawing that India US have got in the relations. Now it's such a strong bilateral. We are the biggest uh, traders uh, trade uh, between US and India. And in US always views India as a counter to China. But but I wonder though. My question to you is, uh, uh, how do people in India feel? Is there is there a difference of opinion on this? Uh, are some people criticizing Modi for what he's doing? 
Jay uh, see, Modi uh, is elected for a third term. Historic third term. Why I say historic? Because uh, France couldn't get a uh, anti-incumbency factor plays big in these uh, countries. And for 15 years, you want to see the same person as your prime minister. And uh, we have analyzed it through our programs, Jay, that Modi has been a victim of pseudo-liberals, of saying that, you know, Modi favors um, the Hindu uh, um, religion or uh, Hindus more than the Muslims in our, in our country. But Jay, no policy, no issue has been uh, divided on the basis of religion in India. This is false propaganda which is created by the pseudo-liberals. And uh, Jay, when they crib about uh, religion, believe me, they are the ones who take maximum uh, benefit from the ration cards. They are the ones who take maximum benefit from the government schemes. They are, you know, like you know, they have demographic politics. They have more children, more benefits, more schemes. In India, there is no barrier uh, restricting you on the basis of religion. Nothing. We, we have freedom of religion. So then how do you say that Modi is anti-Islamic? How? There is no there is no basis. If you just put a court and you leave it up to the person in front to defend the court or offend the court, uh, it doesn't make any sense. Give some proof that he has been anti-Muslim or he has been pro-Hindu in any which way. If he is restoring old in Indian temples, doesn't mean he is pro-Hindu. If he is, uh, you know, if he is promoting uh, International Yoga Day on the UN platform, doesn't mean he is anti-Muslim. Hindu uh, Hinduism is uh, seven, eight thousand, or uh, you know, the oldest religion in the world. So he is promoting that on the world stage. You can't accuse mm -hmm. him of mm -hmm. uh, not. He's promoting Indianness. Jay. Marty, one mm -hmm. of the other issues that that um, that appears in in the press that I looked at. Um, and there's press all over the world about what we're talking about, um, is that to the extent that there are bad optics about yeah. Modi's uh, bilateral relationship and uh, uh, support of Putin, um, even assuming there are bad optics for some people, yeah. some countries, some groups around the world, um, yeah. that those bad optics will be forgotten. You know the way history moves. You know there's a kind of news cycle, um, an optics cycle, and that over time this will all become um, less important to those who would criticize Modi uh, for his uh, relation, his new, newfound close relationship with Putin. Do you agree? Yeah, Jay. Uh, see, it's the same. It's actually literally the same. Germany is supporting Ukraine with weapons, but still buying gas from Russia. So uh, it's that kind of a uh, dual policy that a country has to play to keep your economics in place. Now, if Germany shuts down Russian gas, the economy will collapse. Uh, so all the while that they want to support Ukraine, they also have to take care that they take the benefits from Russia also. So without having any historical ties. So for India, for Modi, uh, Jay, make no mistake, these are two statesmen who have been together for over two decades. They call each other brothers. And uh, I, I, I have an inkling that when Putin visited uh, India for around eight hours, a few hours before, a uh, few days before he invaded Ukraine, it was to inform, to confide what he was going to do. Because that power walk which they do is different from normal walks that, if, if I can show you the clip, you will be excited about it, that this is the dynamics that happens in international politics that they know what is happening. The strategic support that they get from their partners, their allies. Russia counts India as their top five friends. And very vocally they count uh, India as the top five. And India, uh, Jay, has collaborated with Russia on so many things, and uh, you you remember you know the remember the economic corridor that they are putting up. So that is so important for all these countries: Russia, Saudi Arabia, Israel. Uh, Everybody is coming together, uh, Italy, so so that they bypass all these uh, Houthis and everything, and they create a very safe and swift economic corridor. We know that. Um... 
that Trump, if he wins, takes power, whether he, he wins the vote or just takes power, as, as he tried to do before, um, he will support Putin. And that will be, uh, you know, in effect, supporting or getting closer to India and Modi because of uh, Modi's position on this. So that's, that's on the one side. But on the other side, it's maybe more complicated. Joe Biden has supported Ukraine. He's opposed, uh, you know, Putin in many ways, including a lot of sanctions, many of which haven't worked. Um, and, you know, we, we understand that Kamala Harris is, is going to follow Joe Biden's policy on that. And mm -hmm. Joe Biden has four or five months to continue to advance that policy. But presumably, Kamala Harris will continue it too. My, it's, but as you say, and, and we have to recognize uh, for Modi, that this is very complex and it is a balancing act. Yes. Um, and there are lots of considerations, not only historical, economic, um, you know, political, geopolitical involved. So many things um, go to determine what position nation states take these days. So my question to you is um, I'm going to make you I'm going to make you uh, secretary of state again. I like having you as secretary of state. Uh, I think you're a good secretary of state. So, Rupati, suppose you're know, Secretary of State to Kamala Harris. Let's, uh, let's say she wins. <laughs> How would you handle this difficult, complex engagement? Gee, I would. <laughs> I'm always honored by your choice. But I would really, really. Uh, uh, what do you say? Watch. Because uh, right now you can do nothing about it because these two are not going to stab each other in the back. Definitely, that is, has to be very clear. You cannot question right now why these people are doing this because it is the course of international relations that is happening. And uh, Jay, if India, if, okay, let's take it hypothetically, if India refuses to recognize uh, Russia or refuses to, uh, uh, what is that, acknowledge Putin's uh, gestures or any which way becomes uh, very... Um, anti-Russia. Would that give a good image of India as a, uh, as a country? It would not. It would um, show India as a very disoriented or um, uh, country which is not loyal in its roots. Uh, right now, India is a long-lasting friend. Being friends with Russia would never mean being enemies with US. India has always prioritized US as the first partner and Russia as a friend. So this kind of is that, tell me who is your bestie. <laughs> it's like that, you know. It's uh, exactly that situation when you're, you're in a group and your friends ask you, tell me who is your bestie. It's like that. So it's just that they should all enjoy a cup of coffee together and be together just for the sake of development of humanity. Literally, I'm telling you, they should just stop the wars because as we speak, the wars continue. Years and years have passed, wars have continued. So we need leaders who just stop the wars, bring people to conclusions, and concentrate on economics rather than, you know, this. And bringing Putin to his senses and keeping him track on track for economics rather than uh, going to Ukraine would be, you know, the duty of all. <laughs> I prefer it. <laughs> well, you know, um, as Secretary of State, you'd be interested in uh, international relations, diplomatic relations with every country in the world, every single one, including India, of course, because we, we also have a, a long relationship. Maybe it's imperfect uh, with India. And India is very important in terms of population, you know, education, productivity, and its relations with others. So as the Secretary of State, you know, do you feel that we should be spending more time with India, with Modi, courting him, trying to get closer to him, improving our relationship with him, reinforcing you know, the, the positive relationship we've had with India over all these years. Uh, as Secretary of State, um, would you spend more time with him? Jay, India and uh, uh, the US are natural allies. As democracies, they are natural allies. They understand each other. And the intermingling that has happened due to, you know, the diaspora, 
that we speak about who have uh, contributed to each other's economy so well, the bilateral, uh, you remember the G20 which happened. Uh, the US was in the forefront to talk about the corridors and uh, bypassing this is the BR road, uh, BRI road of China. So uh, keeping India and uh, US together is not a task. It comes very naturally and Modi will give up the world, but never give up its relation with the United States. That is a written uh, uh, statement, Jay. He would mm -hmm. never ever compromise on US interests uh, over any other country. because Simply because uh, our relations, bilateral relations have been on an upward progression. It has never been, uh, what do you say? It has never gone down. It has always been progressing upwards. From We had our downs, but it has gone uh, from strength to strength. And uh, trading connections, strategic connections, support, uh, all these become so important, Jay. Uh, Biden was one of the first presidents to give um, uh, Modi a state visit. When uh, Trump came to India, he got a, you know, he was very fascinated with the fact that Nixon was greeted by 5,000 uh, people. He was very fascinated by this. And Modi got to know about this. So Modi has lined up his entire route from the airport till the stadium. That is the world's largest uh, cricket stadium. The entire route was, uh, um, was surrounded by people chanting, Trump, Trump, Modi, Modi. I mean, can you imagine the high that this fellow got? And when Trump entered the stadium, Jay, a full-fledged uh, field back to the brim, they were chanting his name. This guy got an ego boost of, uh, you know, that he had always spoken that he was very fascinated with Nixon getting such a welcome and he got a bigger welcome, a five times bigger welcome than Nixon. So he, he loved it. He loved it. That anti anti um, Modi uh, propaganda, uh, propaganda was that they had these smoke fires, which could be seen from uh, Trump's. They had lit these smoke bombs to show that their disturbances. Trump ignored them, ignored. So that's the kind of trust Trump put on Modi. So any U.S. president who comes, they know that India is ally, a friend, and they can trust. India forever. It's like that. We'll have to leave it there. Uh, thank you so much, Rup Mari Kandakar, uh, our geopolitical analyst. Uh, this has been a very important discussion, and I think we're going to find as we go forward that the points you make are, are very important to understanding the relationship between um, the three countries, the four countries, uh, India and Russia, India and China, India and the U.S. And we have got to focus on all of that going forward. Thank you so much, Rupmati.